Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck titled Giant Chip as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and this might be one of my favorite creations as of late as it is built around the Reality Chip, a 2-mana 04 legendary artifact creature that's also an equipment jellyfish since we can look at the top card of our library at any time and we can reconfigure it onto a creature for 2 and a blue and when the Reality Chip is attached to a creature we can play lands and cast spells from the top of our library and I'm always a big fan of these effects that let us play cards of the top of our deck and the way we maximize the potential of the reality chip is with effects that let us play additional lands each turn like Azusa's many journeys on chapter one says we can play an additional land this turn then gain some life and transforms into the likeness of the seeker a 3-3 creature that we can maybe reconfigure the reality chip onto and then we also have the level 2 on Druid class, a 2-man enchantment that on level 1 says whenever land enters a battlefield under our control we gain one life. Then for 3 mana we can level it up to let us play an additional land each turn. And finally on level 3 we can turn one of our lands into a creature with power and toughness each equal to the number of lands we control. And the level 3 on Druid class is going to be one of the main win conditions in the deck. Then another way we have of generating extra mana with all those extra land drops is Lotus Cobra, a 2-1 with landfall, saying whenever land enters a battlefield under our control, add one mana of any color. So that can generate a ton of extra mana if we get to play multiple lands in the same turn. Plus we also have Evolving Wilds as a fetch land that can essentially give us two landfall triggers. And we can also use it to shuffle away unwanted cards that we see on top of our deck with a reality chip. Then the giant part of a giant chip comes from some of our giant cards, like a giant's amulet, a one mana artifact equipment, equips for two mana, giving the equipped creature one additional toughness and hexproof as long as it's untapped. So that's an excellent way to protect the creature that's being reconfigured by the reality chip, so the opponent can't easily remove it with one removal spell. And then the Giant's Amulet can also pay 3 and a blue when it enters a battlefield. And if we do, we get to make a 4-4 blue Giant Wizard creature token and attach the Giant's Amulet to it. So it turns kind of into a 5-mana 4-5 with Hexproof as long as it's untapped. And then all those giant creatures synergize very nicely with Cyclone Summoner, a 7-mana seven 7-7 seven, seven giant wizard, saying when the summoner enters a battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, return all permanents to their owner's hands except for giants, wizards, and lands. So if we happen to have a few giant tokens from Giant Amulet, we get to keep those and potentially hit the opponent with them. And of course the lands we get from the level 3 on Druid class will also stay in play. So a common play pattern is to generate a big mana advantage thanks to the extra land cards and reality chip, eventually get to level 3 on Druid class. We may not be in a position to attack with our land, but we can maybe still protect it with a Giant's Amulet. And then at some point we play Cyclone Summoner, bounce everything, or land is still there to attack the opponent and potentially one hit KO with them. And then we also have the full playset of Eureka Moment as some card draw lets us draw two and then put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. So that's another way of generating extra lands in play and maybe getting some landfall triggers. And then a two copies of a Glimpse of the Cosmos as another card draw effect lets us look at the top three cards of our library, putting one of them into our hand, the rest on the bottom. And as long as we control a giant, we can cast a Glimpse from our graveyard for just a single blue and then it gets exiled afterwards. And then the mana base includes 30 lands total because when playing cards like Druid Class and Many Journeys we do want to have a ton of lands in the deck. So half of our deck is lands, including the four copies of Evolving Wilds with plenty of basics to go with it with four forests and six islands. Then we've got some creature lands, two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants, as well as the full place out of Lair of the Hydra. These can also be powerful win conditions when we have a lot of lands in play. One of each of the legendary lands from Kamigawa to potentially bounce a creature or deal with an artifact enchantment or non-basic land. And then some dual lands with the Pathway and a Dream Root Cascade. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, and yeah, we've got a keeper. We'll have to fetch for a green source with Evolving Wilds. That's fine. And then turn to Hall of the Storm Giant still comes into play untapped. Maybe wait on Lotus Cobra until turn three if we're afraid of removal, so we can get an immediate bit of uh, mana from Landfall. Opponents appears to be mono green. Turn to Florahedron. Okay. So, 
could still go for Lotus Cobra. And then next turn, if I play a land, I'll have four mana, basically. Enough to play Druid class and Reality Chip. Although, can still play the Cobra next turn. Maybe this turn go for Druid class. And then next turn, my land will gain a life as well. So just three mana for a Kazandu Mammoth. So we could go Cobra into Reality Chip. Although we could also try and protect our reality chip by reconfiguring it right away, or maybe putting a giant's amulet on it at some point. So I could also just level up my druid class, play an extra land. Question is whether to play amulet for one mana or for five. I think going cobra into chip is still the play. And then if they want to fight my creature here, that's fine. Another reality chip on top, so not too sad if the one in play dies. It is legendary after all. Opponent not even attacking, okay. Well, now we might have to play around some instant speed removal if we try and reconfigure onto Lotus Cobra. If I level up Druid class we get to play two lands, so that's four more mana. Yeah, I guess we'll do that first, so let me play a land. Trigger Cobra. And then level up Druid class. See if they have a response. Play another land. And then... Could also just uh, use a Soaring City here instead. Because of course now once I do reconfigure Reality Chip, I'm not going to be able to play an additional land of the top, so wouldn't really be using it to its full potential. So I'm not opposed to just bouncing the Mammoth. As we're one mana short of playing Amulets and making a Giant with it. Alright, that worked. And do I want to play Amulet for one mana? Let's keep it to maybe play for five next turn. Could see something like a Seekus Chariot. Nope, opponent's got their own Cobra. Making blue mana, so maybe they were just missing a color. And a Fading Hope to bounce the chip, that's fine. So, looks like they're also blue-green ramp deck after all. Which does explain their kind of slower start. Okay, so now I could play chip and reconfigure it. And hope that there's a few lands on top. There's a Cobra on top. So, won't be able to play that if I reconfigure, as I'll be a mana short. But, uh, I guess we could still go for it. The alternative is Giant's Amulet plus equip the Amulet onto Cobra, for instance. Which is not too exciting. So, sure. Reconfigure. And pass it back. And then next turn, especially if there's a land on top, we should be able to combo off quite nicely. Opponent's still stuck on a single blue. It's gonna be Storm of the Festival, okay. Could find lands to trigger landfall as well, but. Probably gonna go for some expensive permanence. Oh, Cobra and a land. So they've got three mana left over. And they're pretty close to flashing back Storm the Festival. But no use for that mana. Alright, so their hand's probably full of expensive spells. But we get to have some fun here with Cobra and Reality Chip. So play that first, get the landfall. And then I'm not going to fetch until we want to get rid of the top card of our deck. P 
opponent might have a fading hope in hand that they're deciding to fire off here. Play not our land. Many journeys. Excellent. Let's just keep going. Cyclone Summoner on top. Now if we cast it off the top of our library, it's not going to trigger, because it only triggers if we cast it from our hand. But of course, still a nice 7-7 seven, seven creature. So, I guess we're one mana short of casting it, and if I fetch with Evolving Wilds, of course, we shuffle it away. So that seems fine. Not too concerned about needing Cyclone Summoner, even though it would be nice to send those Cobras packing. Glimpse on top. That we can cast... And a Eureka moment we can probably put in hand. Another land. And you can kind of see how Reality Chip lets us go crazy. Okay, so do I want to cast a Eureka moment? I could level up Druid class, which also plays around an opposing Cyclone Summoner potentially, although Storm the Festival probably doesn't go in the same deck as Cyclone Summoner. Um... Yeah, I guess going for Eureka Moment now is fine. And then we'll be able to put that land in play, get two more mana, and have more fun. Another Lotus Cobra. Play that. Druid class I can play and level up. Which at this point seems better. And then play Lair, three more mana. And I could play another Reality Chip if I want to. Since I'm one mana short of actually um, leveling up to level three. So sure. And that's probably going to be it for now. Okay, still a pretty effective turn, I would say. And I could offer the trade for Cobra. Don't know if our opponent's likely to accept, but sure. Opponent takes two. Opponent could flashback Storm the Festival here, if I'm not mistaken. 7, 8, 9, 10 with the Florahedron. It's going to be a Cultivator instead. Which will make two more mana with Cobra. And what's the big finish? Tamyo completed Sage. That's fine. Keep my Cobra type down. You cannot delay our victory. Get to untap. Giant's amulet. I can play for either one or five. So the flexibility there is nice too with the reality chip. At this point, we probably want to dig for a cyclone summoner to reset the board. And if I make a giant, I'll be able to play Glimpse for one mana out of the graveyard. Another druid class for more lands. So, play that first. Evolving Wilds is excellent. Eureka Moments, I'm not opposed to playing here. Should be able to pay for itself. And there's a Cyclone Summoner, perfect. Got some more lands to play first. There's probably a permutation where we can actually kill our opponent here by leveling up Druid class and then playing the Cyclone Summoner as well. Another Cyclone Summoner on top, although with two in hand, probably fine to shuffle that away.
Hope that there's some basic lands left in the deck, but there should be. So we'll have to counter mana here in a second. Got 8 floating after all these trigger resolve, plus 4 more is 12. So I guess we're like one short of leveling up Druid class and playing Cyclone Summoner and being able to attack with our lands. Let's see, 3. I guess never mind, we've got one more land here hiding. So that should work. Level up Druid class. Usually go for the basic land. So Field of Rune can mess it up. Cast Cyclone Summoner. I guess we'll only be hitting our opponent for 14 here. Since we played the Giant this turn, but still seems okay. And attack. We'll have to discard to hand size a little bit. So let's see, what don't we need anymore? One or two Druid class can go. Lotus Cobra times two can go. Probably don't need double reality chip when we're about to draw another. All right, that seems good enough. Bones got fading hope for my land. And yeah, they can make some chum blockers, but we can bounce them back with a second summoner, so that should still be game. I guess they could play Florahedron as a lane, so they can play Tamyo and keep these summoner tapped down. But we also have creature lanes we can activate. Cultivator gets an untapped island, so 4 mana remaining, so they could play Tamyo with decreased loyalty here, thanks to the completed ability. And a second summoner is still good enough here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a bit of an unconventional hand. We have four lands, Eureka moments, which can maybe ramp into summoner, but no early ramp cards. So, if we're up against a very aggressive deck, this may be too slow to cast summoner. And uh, we might get run over before we get to seven mana. If we had, like a turn two Cobra into turn three Eureka moments, I would be all about this hand. So, it's a tough call. I guess we'll try it, and then hope to pick up something cheap. Get our creature lands out of the way. Turn one commune with spirits, alright, so this is a green-white enchantment deck. A matchup for Cyclone Summoner should be quite good, as it can reset all the spirit tokens they get from Hallowed Haunting. Just gotta hope they don't have an explosive start of turn two naturalist into a turn three runeforged champion. It's going to be turn to Kami instead. That's okay. So yeah, off to a slightly slower start here. But Eureka Moment will ramp us. And then we're not too far from Summoner. And back-to-back -back Summoner is pretty hard for the enchantment deck to recover from. But they can deal quite a bit of damage with Kami and now a Visitor into potentially a Rune. Uh, rune of Sustenance on their land. So, common strategy for the runes deck is to enchant lands. Although they might want to consider enchanting my land in case of Field of Rune. Which is something I've learned last time when playing a Hallowed Haunting deck. Okay, so now we could potentially channel the Soaring City, but most likely gonna Eureka Moments. Next turn I could make a Giant to block with as well. Yeah, it could be tempting to bounce the Kami here, depending on where they put the counters. 
The main problem with using the channel ability is that we might be short on lands to actually cast Cyclone Summoner. If we don't draw a few more. But I'll be able to make a 4-5 Giants next turn regardless. So I'm kind of hoping they just tap out for Hello Taunting and don't try and go for too much damage. Right. Opponent goes for a Naturalist's. Visitor pumps itself. And another rune for one mana this time. Yeah, probably won't be able to go for Eureka moment, but we'll be forced to Soaring City the Kami. Alright, and then... Probably go for amulets as a 4 5. Which is not ideal here, but at least it's not going to get bounced by my own Cyclone Summoner. And then really hoping to draw a lot of lands so we can next turn Eureka moments and turn after Summoner. We do have quite a bit of life gain built into the deck as well with the second chapter of Azusa's Many Journeys and Druid class gaining life when we play a land. So we can potentially stem the bleeding somewhat. Commune with Spirits. Still lets them cast a 3 mana Haunting. Yep. Visitor pumps itself. And they might have another enchantment here for one mana. Rune of Might. That's too bad, so now they get to attack past our giant. At least we hold off the Naturalist. Druid class, but no land. Alright, so I might have to main phase Eureka moment here. And then I can still maybe play a 2-drop afterwards. Don't think chum blocking with a land is going to be a winning line, but there's a chance we're just dead next turn. If they can play a ton of enchantments out. Alright, that works. So I can put the land into play, or alternatively, I can put island in play, play druid class, and then gain one life, which might be better. So let's do that. Alright, and then next turn I can play a Cyclone Summoner, reset the board, and hopefully we'll still have our giant token in play. Pwn goes for Kami, that's promising, and Showdown. Alright, I think this is probably the best case scenario for us. Assuming they don't hit any cheap enchantments they can play out. I guess they can actually attack with all three and force me to chump the Visitor as opposed to being able to keep my Giant token in play. So hopefully they don't see that and only attack for five. Finds another Hello Taunting. Opponent's doing the math now and realizes they can actually attack. Yeah, that one extra point makes a difference. If we hadn't gained the life of a Druid class, we would have been dead here. Okay, so Cyclone Summoner doesn't leave any mana for anything else. Probably should have played Cascade first, so I gained the life of Druid class. I guess I'll keep the land in hand to gain life with Druid class in the future. A hasty rune could still get us, but we haven't seen any of the runes of speed yet. Uh oh, there's a rune of speed. So if they have another one, we're dead. Touch of Spirit Realm, Exiling Summoner will do it too. Alright, GG's. The rune deck is quite powerful, and we had just had a 
pretty slow start that wasn't able to keep up. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Got our glimpse for card draw, many journeys to accelerate our mana, and then Giant's Amulet lets us replay glimpse. Facing an artifact enchantment deck with Bang Buster on two. And we'll hang on to the amulet. Circuit Mender gains two. Still one short of crewing the bank buster. And then now Glimpse plus many journeys seems fine. Start with Glimpse. Finds a reality chip. That's what we want. Could play the reality chip. Hope it doesn't get removed so next turn we can reconfigure. It's not a bad idea. If our opponent has removal in white, it could be something like Borrowed Time, which exiles Reality Chip regardless of it being reconfigured. So maybe it's fine to run it out now. Cobra coming up, that's exciting. Alright, hopefully they don't mess with our permanence. And then next turn we could have some fun. Crawling Barons. Possible opponents playing something like Forsaken Monuments with all those colorless lands. Alright, Fateful Absence destroys a chip. I guess that one in particular we could have played around by reconfiguring. So, can play Cobra. Land, make an extra mana. Many journeys, play an extra land, make an extra mana. And crank the clue token. Alright, a backup reality chip. Now I'll probably play around removal and hang on to it. Still probably want to play Amulet as a creature so we can replay Glimpse. Treasure Vault, another colorless land, and yeah, there's Forsaken Monuments, as we predicted. So now they can crew Bankbuster with a Mender. Or just attack for four. Right, now our opponent's tapped out at least. So, start by playing Reality Chip, see what's on top, hopefully it's a land. It is. Okay, so we can reconfigure, and then probably put it on the Seeker here, play a land, play Amulet for one mana, another Reality Chip is good to have, and then now I can either equip Amulet to Seeker, to protect it or play another Cobra. Given that there's another chip coming up, I guess I don't mind playing another Cobra. And I'm not really planning on blocking, so might as well attack. Patchwork Automaton can grow the more artifacts they play. Mechanic can crew the bank buster. And another circuit mender. Alright, bonus empty handed at least. They still have a crawling barons to turn into a creature, which also gets pumped by monument. So we're under quite a bit of pressure, but they don't have any interaction. And hopefully we can take over with the reality chip, eventually find Cyclone Summoner, and take it from there. So I don't hit my spot. 
Bangbuster gets crewed as opposed to drawing. And we'll take 10. Evolving Wilds is excellent. Represents a lot of mana with Cobra. Now we're still lacking a way of playing an extra lane this turn. So... I can either try and find one by playing the Giant's Amulet replaying Glimpse, or I can just fetch away the land in the hopes of finding a spell. Let's go with the Giant's Amulet. Make a token. Play Glimpse. And find another Glimpse. Another Evolving Wilds on top. So do we want to shuffle that away now? I guess we can fetch now. Free up some mana. Play Glimpse. And the many journeys I can take, and now I wouldn't mind another land on top. Okay, so many journeys lets me play Hall, which makes two more mana. And a Druid class, perfect. Alright, so probably won't be able to play much else this turn, but now with the extra land drop from Druid class, we're more likely to combo off next turn. And then we'll uh, flash back a glimpse, why not? And probably go for Lotus Cobra. Eureka moment on top is nice to know. Probably gonna have to chum block a bunch, but I'm fine to give up pretty much everything except Lotus Cobra. Ingenious Smith. Could find interaction like Portable Hole or other artifact creatures. Finds an Iron Apprentice. Okay, so we'll see if they get in there with a Crawling Barons as well. Having Druid class in play earlier also would have gained a lot of life here. Right, Reliquary gets sacrificed to draw instead. So they're not taking the most aggressive approach possible, which is probably good for us. Still gonna have to chump, but we might be able to keep a couple valuable creatures. So here I could, let's say, double block Bank Buster. Maybe using the uh, Equipped Seeker, so if they take out Giants, we don't have to spend the mana reconfiguring. And then I can chump the Automaton, take 8, and go to 2. That seems fine. And keep double Cobra. Alternatively, could have uh, just not put the Equipped Likeness in harm's way. But yeah, opponent gonna take out the giant instead, so that works. Alright, and then we really want to find a Cyclone Summoner. We have to draw it, because if we play it off the top, it doesn't count. And then start with Cobra. There's a Cyclone Summoner, which I can Eureka Moment into. And that should help out quite a lot. Put land in play, three more mana, pays for Druid class. So 
So if I level up, can play the land and then still play Cyclone Summoner. Could play another Druid class. We'll have to pick it back up with the Cyclone Summoner. So it's also possible I'm better off just playing this and then replaying some creatures afterwards like Lotus Cobra. Or we could level up Druid class if we think we can survive another attack, but that seems pretty risky. So yeah, we'll just go for Summoner. Don't think I'm attacking with a likeness. Would also waste a floating mana. So yeah, let's just reset the board. There's still Crawling Barons to worry about, but opponent's not going to have the mana to turn it into creature and have it be threatening. But they can still level up a Crawling Barons before picking up monuments, since the Barons doesn't get bounced, so that was a good heads-up play. Opponent also draws off Circuit Mender, leaving the battlefield, so that's interesting. And then three mana left. No lands in hand. Probably fine to play a Cobra, plus an Amulet, which I'll otherwise have to discard to hand size. And we'll have to discard one more card. Backup Reality Chip can go. Alright, so opponent's still at 25, we're still at 8, and they've got a ton of cards in hand. But now we've got an incredible mana advantage over our opponent. 7 lands versus... What's uh, 12 here? Monument into Automaton. They might have wanted to tap the planes, but I guess then they wouldn't be able to play the mechanic. Okay, so step one. I guess we want to get the reality chip equipped since we're kind of light on lands at the moment, so we're really hoping for lands on top. And then play Lotus Cobra and Druid class before playing more lands out, if possible. But let's see what's on top first. Lands. Okay. So I can reconfigure onto, let's say, Cyclone Summoner. And then the question remains how to sequence our other cards. Probably just double Cobra plus Druid class. Play Druid class so I gain life. And then hoping for more lands on top. Cyclone Summer is a little awkward. So that one I wouldn't be able to play. Can still play a Druid class and level up the one in play. And then we'll keep Summoner back, can jump with Cobra if needed. Hopefully that's not going to be necessary. And then next turn we're really ready to combo off. Smith finds another automaton. The monument does certainly make up for our mana advantage by doubling the mana from their Colros lands. But I'm glad we traded for the Bank Buster, so we at least shut off some of their card draw. We've got another Summoner coming up, which can always reset the board if needed. But hopefully we can level up a Druid class first, so we can at least attack with our land that's left over. Right, so double Circuit Mender. Put it up to 37, 39. So it's going to be a bit of a slog. They've got an 8-8 automaton, which I'm probably going to have to chump. I guess I could take 8 and go to 1 here. So we have more mana with triple Cobra. All right, opponent passes. Eureka moment on top. Let's start there. So 
So our goal is going to be to level up all the copies of Druid class, make some large lands, and then bounce aboard, hopefully able to kill our opponent on the spot. Amulet I probably play for one mana. Another Cyclone Summoner waiting on top. So, do I want to cast that? It would stay in play at least. Wouldn't reset the board quite yet. I think I might be better off leveling up Druid class. And then we can shuffle it away with the uh, Evolving Wilds. Don't have a ton of basic lands left. So level this up so we can play an extra land. Another druid class on top I'll take. And there's Cyclone Summoner again. So I level up twice. Still leaves enough mana for Cyclone Summoner from hand. But I might not want to play the one on top. Uh, if I play the one on top, I guess we might still hit some extra lands with Triple Lotus Cobra to keep going, which may be worth it. Sure. Amulet for one. And Lair on top. So I can level up this Druid class. Which basically pays for itself. Eureka moment I can play. Happy with double evolving wilds. Many journeys lets me play the land on top before we shuffle with evolving wilds. Another Druid class. Okay, another many journeys to play the land. Now we'll fetch, hoping there's a basic left. There is. Then we can level this one up to play Evolving Wilds, which makes more mana thanks to Cobra, with the last remaining basic. So let's see, these are all level 2. Okay, so we don't have any Druid classes left to level up. So we'll fetch. Last land. That's the giant chip deck in action, getting to fully combo off. Takes a while to go through it sometimes, but that's the fun. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Lotus Cobra to generate extra mana alongside many journeys. Could maybe play turn 3 Eureka moment. So I like where this is going. Opponent red white, they could certainly have removal for Cobra. So I could go for many journeys plus evolving wilds instead. But if Cobra lives, the upside is potentially higher. I guess if I go many journeys, I could still Eureka moments next turn. If 
if I put the Evolving Wilds in right now. Yeah, maybe that's safer. And then we also get our 3-3 three, three creatures sooner to maybe reconfigure onto. So now I could go for Cobra plus Reality Chip, or we can Eureka Moment. Eureka Moment could also be more effective with Cobra in play. So I guess I like this approach. And with a backup Reality Chip, I'm not too upset if one dies. Blade Master attacks. See what trick they have. Sigrid gets rid of the reality chip, that's fine. So I'll probably go for Eureka moment since I won't have the mana to reconfigure reality chip. Land land is good. So I can play another land. Still wouldn't quite give me enough mana to play and reconfigure or to make a giant token. So maybe we're fine just playing a reality chip. Land on top means I'm probably okay playing Boseju out. Don't think we're playing Amulet still. And pass it back. And hope the second ship survives. War leader will pump their warriors. Can still block Sigrid. Likeness would trade for Blade Master. Seems acceptable. Okay, we've got a Druid class on top, which I'm happy to play. Cyclone Summoner, I wouldn't be able to. Now that we have a giant coming up, I could be persuaded to protect the Cobra. Although Cyclone Summoner coming up also kind of incentivizes me to make the giant token. So I've got a few ways to go about it. Could just level up Druid class and pass. I think that's better. And no attacks. We're at 24, so pretty healthy life total. With a Cyclone Summoner that can reset the board if needed. Fireblade Charger, a 2-2. Evolving Wilds on top. Can play a Lair. And then I might want to level up Druid Class before playing Cyclone Summoner, so we have a large land left over. Can fetch to maybe still play a spell off the top. Also have a few creature lands we could activate. So let's fetch. And maybe just going for make a giant token plus level of druid class is fine here. And then back to back cyclone summoner is probably going to be enough to close out the game. Alternatively I could have just cast a 7-7 without bouncing anything. Pass it back. And another Sigrid. It is legendary, so... Kind of an interesting play. Akiri. Although no equipment to go with it. Another Charger. And do we have the mana to glimpse first? Yeah, we're pretty likely to find a land here. Take the Soaring City. I 
that also grows our island. Glimpse finds maybe many journeys. Can maybe play root class. Do I want a glimpse? Sure. Find a land. Cobra, I could play. Although we're starting to run low mana if we still want to play Cyclone Summoner, although we're not forced to. Many journeys lets me play a lair, which then pays for Druid class level up. Yeah, maybe we can just set up a one hit KO with our Cyclone Summoner instead. It's also more fun. Played root class. And that's probably the end of the line for now. Pick up a Eureka moment. And then next turn we should be able to make a land that's large enough to one shot them alongside the giant. The chargers are getting antsy. Sure, I'll take four. And our opponent explodes, no need to show them the Cyclone Summoner. Opponent knows that they're too far behind. Awesome. So we had to switch from ranked to unranked play midway through the video, as I was facing too many of the same Naya enchantment decks over and over, which of course is a very good deck and also happens to be a bad matchup for this blue-green ramp deck, as bouncing everything doesn't accomplish much when the opponent can play everything for free. So I wouldn't recommend this deck in ranked. It's also not a very high win rate deck in general, so don't expect it to be one. But if you're into playing half of your deck in one turn, then this is not a bad place to do it. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.